it's that time again to have a look at swords and see generally what's going good for them. And boy is this season showing a lot of love for them, with the two new swords and the sword based mod which can amplify their damage even further. Now once again they've acquired charge with light mods to fully bring out the potential, however what we have this time round is a lot more easier to run with and hassle free and can make your build do some incredible damage DPS numbers on bosses by a mile compared to using the high energy fire mod which is limited in its damage. Hello everyone, Freedia here here and welcome back in today's build session for Destiny 2. I hope you're all keeping safe out there, no matter where you are in the world. In today's video we are going to look into and cover the falling guillotine sword with the new Lucant blade mod and combine it with the incredibly powerful Nezraxian exotic for what I would like to call the delete everything build. This build will provide you with the utmost highest amount of DPS you can offer for any general sword build in game. I can make taking on unstoppables and nightfalls to endgame bosses a cakewalk for you and your allies. By the end of the video I will show you everything that you need to make this build dominate an endgame and will probably end up being the new build for you to main until something even more powerful comes later on. So the circle we will be using is the Tunnel of Hunger tree line. for simply put, to make full use of the devour effect for a grenade and oppressive darkness set up. Although a tunnel of chaos would be more worthwhile to use because of the chaos accelerant perk having a much more stronger effect against enemies whilst doing a large number of damage to them, the hunger tree line is much more effective for the survivability side of things while participating in the high level content. Plus, grenades become a lot more fruitful the game when combined with the Nezrax in exotic since both of these combined will offer you a high level amount of support and DPS at your disposal. Something that the Chaos Tree Line can offer, although it doesn't mean you can't use said tree line at all. I tend to mix up the tree line I use in game on what the content is based on and what I would get the most out of it. For example, in Gambit, using the Chaos Tree Line for taking on the final boss with a overcharged grenade is something I find most useful in as we only have a short time frame to do as much damage as we possibly can before we get invaded or enemies respawn back in. If I was playing it in the dungeon instead for example, I would go ahead and use the devour tree line as I want to make sure that I can survive much longer through the whole ordeal while still being able to do a large number of damage on the go. It all depends on what you're playing exactly and how you want to play around it. Both trees have their pros and cons which I find for personal use helpful for allowing me to think ahead on what tree line I should opt into before diving into the piece of content I'm playing in. For the grenades, the Vortex grenade is highly recommended as it's truly the best grenade to use for its duration and damaging game. Now for the weapons, flexibility is available for your secondary of choice, but it will need to be void based so it can correspond with your Nezrak Sin. Your primary and heavy slot will also need to be specific weapons for the maximum amount of damage to do but alternatives can be chosen. Within the primary slot I've gone with the Wither Horde Grenade Launcher as originally I wanted to use the Mountaintop with the build for its high damage, however I soon realised I don't have the Mountaintop still and most of you guys may not have it either so with the Wither Horde instead it's a great alternative to main. The weapon does have some effective damage for either direct hits or ground denial and truly fits well when used in the PvE environments that focus on taking on a large group of enemies in a small area. Now for my case here, that's exactly what I will be doing and using it for, so I can prevent myself from being overrun, but when it comes down to the bosses this is where I'll be maximising it further with this direct ticking damage that will stack with my debuff and also stack with my sword damage buff once I get its perks going. I only need to fire off one and get a direct hit against the boss to start the quick and tidy process of taking out a boss. Now I would recommend you mass work it as well so you can get the auto loading holster with it which is a massive improvement in terms of quick DPS you can pull out on the boss when switching in between both of your weapons. Now for our secondary I'm using the gnawing hunger AR with acrifice round, fill prep and demolitionist. As the 600 RPMs received a massive buff in game at the start of the season, you'll see the Gnawing Hunger a lot with players as it's effective what it does. It has a great range of perks and is currently the top weapon to bring out for the next season. Now my version I have is what I use for PvE and PvP, but mainly for PvE at the moment, and the role I have is one of the many god roles to look out for when grinding said weapon. 
I'm making use of the weapon combined with the Nezrax to activate my exalted ability to freely gain back ability NG upon kills. And this will be handy if I wish to make use of the oppressive darkness a lot more fights. At the same time, I also have the demolitions perk also triggering upon kills to give me grenade energy back. So in practice, I will get the double amount of grenade energy needed to make full use of my mod there and then. And then compared to not having the perk at all. Now this can be freely switched to another void weapon like the recluse if you feel like demolitionist isn't needed for the setup. And this is as long as you find your alternative comfortable to play with. For heavy, we've got the falling guillotine sword with whirlwind blade and energy transfer. I talked about this weapon in the last video of mine, but basically with the setup we have going, everything will come down to the sword putting in the maximum amount of damage against all bosses and Ultra's face, and this will need to be executed properly if you wish to get the most out of the build. Now you will need to get a version with the whirlwind blade for the damage buff, as this will stack with the Lucan blade mod for even more damage and it would be wise to get the Relentless Strike perk as well, but it's not that needed to complete the build. For the stats, nothing here needs to be heavily focused in to get the whole build going. However, if you wish to maximize certain stats for better benefits, then the option is there for you. My resilience is in the 50, which is the ideal level to reach for both PvP and PvE. This stat does not need to be any higher, as you do not get any more benefits the higher you go, sadly. Now recovery is in the 60 ranges as I had enough stats left over to push it higher and it will come in handy for the more hectic events in game. And then my discipline is in the 60 ranges for a 51 second cooldown and this is another area that I do recommend you aim for as it's the ideal sweet spot for regen gain and compared to the 50 ranges you're shaving off at least a 8 seconds cooldown which when further combined with our gear mods works out the best for the build. Focus on getting your discipline to a high enough level so that we can fully make use of the debuff mod and also combine it with the exotic for faster regen. Now if you have the demolitions perk and a very high discipline, say within the 80 ranges, plus the exotic in action, then it's kind of going to waste at this point. So aim for the 50 to 60 ranges and then combine that with the demolitions perk and Nesrax to fully close the circles whilst not overdoing your stats. Doing this now will at least leave you some stats left over to go focus on the other stats that you wish. For armor, the Nesrex and Exotic will be required for the set. No specific affinity is required unless you want something to correspond with the weaponry you're using, although depending on what your stats are, you can actually get away with not using the Nesrex and opting for a legendary of your choice, and then use the Energy Converter mod instead for a large boost in super energy, as you're going to be using your grenades a lot, so you can benefit from this combo. Now, downside to this is that you won't be able to regen your ability very fast compared to using exotic. Plus, it will affect your sword damage as well. So, look at the options that you have first. The rest of the armor will require you to have 3 solo affinity armor pieces for the charge by light mods and supercharge mod, and 1 arc affinity armor piece for the lucent blade mod, which is a must have. Now, here are the mods we are currently using, which I will go in a bit more depth afterwards. Head, Discipline and Grenade Launcher Ammo Finder mod Arm, Resilience, Auto Rifle Loader and Supercharged mod Chest, Resilience, Sword Reserves and Lucent Blade mod Leg, Discipline, Enhanced Sword Scavenger and Taken Charge mod Bond, Concussive Dampener, Oppressive Darkness and Bomber mod With the oncoming sun setting for weapons like Recluse and Mountaintop, now is a good time to find an alternative build to play with that will give you the same benefits as the most popular meta loadouts while also offering you more at the same time. What we have here is a great alternative to use that will provide a large bump in damage for PvE based content, whilst at the same time being usable in PvP as well, but may require you to change up a few things here and there. So what exactly are we dealing with here? Well, with the Wither Horde Exotic, Nezorax, Oppressive Darkness and Fallen Guillotine, the plan here is to commit a wombo combo setup that will place a ton of pressure onto a boss or a group of enemies that will overall wipe them out or heavily damage said enemy whilst receiving energy back. For the gameplay shown, when I up against a boss, I will start off with the Whipper Horde and try to land a direct hit on the boss to commence the ticking damage effect. After that, I will then set off my grenade which is backed up by the Oppressive Darkness mod which will provide a 30% debuff on enemies it affects 
which in our case will be the boss and severely weaken them. After that I will pull out my sword and go to town on the boss while this is all happening and then repeat the process over and over again until the boss is dead. Ideally you will need to get your whirlwind blade perk at times 5 to really pull the numbers in and also where the Lucan blade mod will also shine as it will provide a 35% damage buff to our sword which also stacks with the whirlwind blade perk. Now this makes the sword damage head into the 20k ranges easily for nearly every swing connected and when you add in the ability to debuff the enemy at the same time and take great damage, bosses don't tend to last very long from what I've noticed. If you look at the current gameplay with the gamut boss I face, you can see exactly what I mean by bosses not lasting long with the crazy setup. If you use the setup with teammates for the first phase of the boss and everyone else has good weapons for DPS as well, you can easily take off one third of the boss's health and two phase them easily, if everything goes as planned of course. This method can be done in nightfalls, nightmare hunts, raids, dungeons, horror missions, strikes, etc. You name it with any sort of challenging bosses there is and this build will do the work. And funnily enough, you're going to see this build quite a lot now actually because the damage numbers calculated shows it's fairly viable in the PvE scene to the point that many players are making this their new loadout once sunsetting kicks in. And another thing I do love about this build as well is that everything within the set can be easily gotten by all players and not just those who dedicate a lot of hours into the game. This overall now not only changes the meta so that everyone can participate in, but it also means that when you run into another player with this set on, it means that the content you're facing is going to be over very, very quickly. Overall, this build will become part of one of the many oncoming meta builds that players will adapt to once sunsetting kicks in for everyone. The only downside to the build is that the Oppressive Darkness mod won't be around forever, but even with the mod available or not, it's still going to be doing a lot of damage from the get go and with a coordinated team, I don't see this one issue really being a problem. So if you enjoyed the video, then please leave a like and a sub. Also follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with Destiny content if you dig that type of stuff, link is down below. But once again, thanks for stopping by everyone and I'll see you in the next one.